Welcome back to our series where we're explaining all the economic data releases that you see in the monthly cycle and how they relate to each other to better help you deal with them in the markets. This time, we're taking a look at one of the big releases for the manufacturing sector, and that is durable goods orders. We'll look at the US release, but the same principles largely apply for other economies as well. Durable goods orders in the US is released by the US Census Bureau, and it measures the total value of new orders placed with domestic manufacturers, so those that are based in the US. The data release only covers durable goods, which are goods that are designed to last for three or more years. So this includes things like machinery, computers, even planes and things like that. So since durable goods are designed to last, they're often big ticket items, so quite expensive. Now, durable goods orders data is released twice. We have the advanced report with just durable goods orders, and then the second release, which comes alongside factory orders that contains revisions and more information. Now, the advanced durable goods orders report, which we'll be covering in this video, can be seen as a quick and early insight into the manufacturing sector, but the factory orders release gives a more accurate picture. And we'll cover factory orders in a separate video, but actually the interesting thing is that since durable goods are the most important part of that factory orders release, it means less attention is paid to the factory orders in the monthly cycle, despite it providing a more complete picture. So it's the durable goods that's more important. Now this release can be viewed seasonally or non-seasonally, but something to keep in mind is that it's not adjusted for inflation. The figure is based on the nominal amount, so we'd need to keep that in mind when we're analyzing the numbers. Like for example, it might be the case that it seems sales are increasing, but actually when we factor in inflation, it's just the case that prices of goods are increasing instead. So if we want to adjust for inflation within this data, we could look at PPI data, so the producer price index. So why does this matter? Well, if durable goods orders are increasing, that's a good sign of increasing manufacturing activity, economic growth, and job creation. This is because when the economy is doing well, consumer confidence is typically higher, and that means consumers would be more likely to buy bigger ticket items that fall under the category of durable goods, like cars or household appliances. That means it can also be used as an indicator of consumer confidence in the economy, because it's a much better gauge than non-durables, which are typically more common purchases like food and fuel, which still needs to be purchased even during a downturn, whereas during a downturn, it's the big ticket items that will get cut first. So if they're performing well, it could be a sign that consumer confidence is increasing, and the economy is potentially growing. So if the economy is booming and consumer confidence is sky high, there's a lot of demand for durable goods, this may actually show in the unfilled orders section of the factory orders release that comes a bit later. And that can be a sign of potential inflation because prices will increase with the demand and maybe an overheating economy. So this may be a leading indicator of how busy factories may become. And therefore, if there are more orders, then there's going to be more manufacturing activity that's going to require more labor and so on. Now, on the other hand, if orders are decreasing, that could be a sign of a slowing economy and it may result in lower prices and slower inflationary growth. As manufacturing activity declines, jobs may be lost, and so on. Something to keep in mind is that there are a lot of big ticket items included in the data, so the release can be somewhat volatile. As you'd imagine, if there's suddenly a big order, a huge demand for planes, it's going to significantly increase the headline numbers in the release. Therefore, it's more common to look at a three to six month average, or you can also view the data excluding defense and transportation goods, since they're usually the most expensive goods that could distort the data. Now, as we've discussed in previous videos about manufacturing data, it may not be that manufacturing makes up the bulk of the US economy. You know, it only accounts for 11% of the economy and almost 8.5% of payrolls, but it does support many other sectors within the economy and many other jobs indirectly. So it is really important still. Now, if you want to know about the rest of the economic data releases, check out the playlist that's on screen and go through the series and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss when the next ones come out as well. Thanks for watching.